Hello everyone, I'm Lin Xiaoma from Peking University in China. Today, I will talk about our work, New Graph Parallel Deep Neural Network Computation on Large Graphs. This is a joint work with Microsoft Research Asia. Deep neural networks have achieved great successes in many areas. Recently, there is an emerging trend in applying deep, neural, uh, deep learning on graphs, known as graph neural networks, and they have achieved convincing model accuracy in many real-world applica applications. For example, it can learn features from the user item graph for higher quality recommendation. GNs aggregate information following the graph structure. Specifically, each vertex or edge in the graph can be associated with a set of data as its features. A GNN can consist of multiple layers. With uh, iterative propagation conducted layer by layer over the same graph. At, this la at each layer, the vertex or edge features are transformed and uh, propagated along edges and then aggregated as the target vertices to produce new features for the next layer. Traditional DNNs have small and regular grid, grid structures, which is friendly to GPUs. However, in GNNs, graphs are large, sparse, and irregular, resulting in scalability and efficiency problem. There are many deep learning systems like TensorFlow for neural network uh, processing. Here is a simple example to describe how deep learning systems run. First, we declare several placeholders for input data. Then, we declare the forward computation logics with operators. Deep learning systems can automatically generate the backward computation with auto-differentiation to compute the gradients. With this code, we construct a graph called uh, Deep flow graph as an intermediate repre representation in deep learning training. The data flow graph abstraction is easy to replace neural networks and efficient for neural network execution. However, it's hard to replace graph operations and handle large graphs because it takes the whole graph as a data tensor without graph awareness. Most recently, DGL was deep learning systems as graph interfaces for GN programming. However, it has the same scalability and efficiency problems because the backend works as usual without uh, uh, graph awareness. There are also many graph engines for large-scale graph computing. Take PowerGraph as, uh, as an example describe how graph engines run. First, we define the gather function to describe how a vertex gets information from its in neighbors. Then, the apply function is used to update itself with gathered information. Finally, the vertex sends messages to the output to the out neighbors with the scatter function. The whole procedure is defined in a vertex view called vertex programming. Thus, a graph engines can know each vertex minor. It's, it's easy to use graph models to program graph applications like PageRank and apply graph optimizations and scale to very large graphs. However, these systems are hard to replace neural networks and insufficient for neural network execution due to the lack of data flow abstraction. We propose new graph which bridges graph and data flow models to learn wisdom and benefit from both to support efficient and scalable GN processing. It contains a second model for programming GN applications, trunk-based data flow graph translation and streaming processing out of GPU core to support large graphs. We also designed highly optimized graph operators for graph propagation and chain-based parallel streaming strategy for efficient multi-GPU execution. With these techniques, new graph outperforms state-of-the-art implementations on small graphs fit into GPU memory and scales to large graphs with GPUs. First, let's talk about the Saga N abstraction. There are four stages in Saga N. First, 
the scatter propagates information from vertex to the edge to prepare data for the edge transformation. Then the apply edge represents the neural network computation on the edge to transform the edge data. Then the transform the edge data are gathered to the destination vertex. Finally, the apply vertex represents the neural network computation on the vertex to transform the output from the the from the gather stage. Those four stages uh, define a layer of GN, and users can define multiple GN layers. In Sagan, scatter and gather are uh, graph operations which are transparent to users. Well, uh, apply edge and apply vertex are neural network operations where uh, users define neural network computation with data flow. Here is, here is an example describe how to map graph convolutional network to AGAN. In GCN, information from neighbors are multiplied with the scalar value on the edge. So we implement a multiply operator in the apply edge. And set the accumulator as sum to sum up neighbors' information. Then GCN has a fully connected neural network on the vertex. So we implement it in the apply vertex. This code represents a layer of GCN, and we can implement multiple layers of GCN by staking it layer by layer. In each layer of GN, the vertex features and edge from the previous layer are used to compute the new vertex features. However, most real-world graphs are large and cannot fit cannot fit into GPU memory. Thanks to the graph model in Sagan, we can leverage graph partition to scale to large graphs. New graph carefully combines graph partition with data flow to solve the scalability problem in GN. Specifically, we leverage the 2D graph partition. The vertices and the edges are partitioned into chunks. For example, to compute the new vertex trunk video code, which contains vertex zero and three. It needs to gather information from neighbor vertex one and three in chunk E zero and E one zero. Then we can process the graph chunk by chunk in the limited GPU memory. There is a scheduling problem. We can consume the chunks row by row, or column by column, or any other orders. However, we observe that the intermediate data can be accumulated in GPU memory to reduce host device communication. Thus, we take the column-by-column -column scheduling policy. With graph partition, a new graph translates the Saga N program to a trunk-based data flow graph. Take GCN as, as the example to compute the trunk V0 code. We need to calculate trunk V0, E0, and trunk V1. E, E10. With a column by column scheduling policy, we first calculate E00 with scatter, apply edge, gather, and output the accum of this trunk. Specifically, GCN only has a multiply operation for source vertex and edge. We connect a multiply operator between scatter and gather. Thus, the source vertex data in V0 are multiplied with edge value in E0,0 and gathered to the output, to output an acume. And it does the same manner for trunk E1,0. After that, the neighbor's information has been collected as a destination vertices. Then the apply vertex function is used to transform the data and output the V0 code. And V1 code can be computed in a similar manner. Thus, we get a trunk-based data flow graph for the forward computation logics, and the backward computation can be generated by auto-differentiation. OK, next. As graphs are usually large, we would like to scale GN to multiple GPUs for faster processing. A naive solution is to let GPU take a column of edge trunks and outputs the related vertex trunk. 
However, the PCIe lines are limited in modern servers, so the PCIe switch is introduced to support more GPUs in one server. Because each GPU will take all the input, trunk, input virtual trunks, the redundant uh, data transfer through shared upper links results in bandwidth bottleneck. We observe that the links to the neighbor GPUs within the same PCI switch are empty, and each GPU will load the same data. So we can let GPU directly load data from its neighbor GPU via GPU P2P communication, which reduces the data transfer on the shared upper link. Therefore, we formulate GPUs within the same PCI switch as a chain to collaborate on GN processing. Here is an example. First, the, left, the leftmost GPU 0 and 2 in each PCI switch load trunk V1 from the host memory. Then GPU 1 load trunk V1 from GPU 0, and GPU 3 load trunk V1 from GPU 2. Meanwhile, GPU 0 and 1 load trunk V2 from the host memory. Then GPU 1 and 3 delete uh, the consumed trunk V0 and load trunk V1 from GPU 0 and 2. Meanwhile, GPU 0 and 2 load trunk V3 from host memory. Then the GPUs do the same manner for next trunks. This procedure describes the chain based parallel streaming on multiple, on multiple GPUs. Finally, let's talk about the kernel optimization in new graph. Traditional graph algorithms like uh, PayRank usually have scalars on vertices or edges. So graph engines make parallelism over vertices or edges, resulting in different instructions on different threads, which is not efficient for GPU. While GNs usually have uh, regular high dimension features on vertices or edges, so we employ uh, parallelism on feature dimension to achieve same instructions over threads, which is efficient uh, to GPU. Okay, the evaluation. We implemented a uh, new graph on top of TensorFlow and uh, compile it with TensorFlow and uh, DGL. We also implemented uh, TFSaga as a baseline without uh, any optimizations introduced uh, before to show the superiority of our optimizations. We do experiments on a server equipped with eight GPUs. We use three typical GN applications on three small and three large data sites. For small graphs, fit into GPU memory because of our kernel optimizations. New graph achieves up to five times speed up over TensorFlow and up to 19 times speed up over DGL. Also, new graph gets higher speed up for graphs with higher density. Uh, for large graphs that cannot fit into GPU, TensorFlow and the DGL run out of memory on GPU. So we compare new graph with TensorFlow CPU version and uh, TFSaga. Issue is that new graph achieves up to 47 times speed up over TFCPU version and up to five times over TFSaga baseline. We can also say that the TFSaga CPU version is faster than TFCPU because trunks in TFSaga CPU can run concurrently on CPU and achieve a higher CPU utilization. Finally, we show the, the scalability over multiple GPUs. We found that without, with, uh, we found that without chain, new graph gets no speed up for two GPUs because of the bandwidth bottleneck in PCI switch. Thanks to the chain-based streaming strategy, new graph can get a nearly linear scalability. Through new graph, we advocate unifying uh, deep learning and uh, graph computing for efficient and scalable GN processing. New graph represents a critical step in this direction by showing not only the feasibility, but also the potential of such unification. 
This is accomplished by defining the second model to replace genes and uh, fusing graph optimization such as graph partition, scheduling, and parallelism into deep learning frameworks and achieving efficiency and uh, scalability in GN training. And that's all. Thank you. Questions, comments? I don't know if you guys noticed, but we had a GPU paper, a disk paper, a GPU paper, and the last paper is a disk paper. So for what it's worth, go ahead. Interesting. Uh, great talk. Uh, so it's interesting to see that you built this on TensorFlow, right? Right. Uh, do you know any of the optimizations from graph processing GPU world that uh, I were know. not possible on right, TensorFlow right, right. because of its processing model or its data management or any of those things? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Please repeat your question. So, uh, some of the optimizations which are already there in existing GPU-based graph oh, frameworks. Okay, I, I know, uh, I know there's uh, optimizations. Right. So, what, where the difficulty is in porting them, some of them you couldn't port because TensorFlow was adding some limitation to it, maybe. So, I'm oh. coming from graph processing perspective. That's why I'm trying to understand this. Okay. Okay. You, you said uh, you want to know the difference uh, between the uh, other GPU-based. Uh, graph processing system that are and uh, these, are, these are optimizations? Sure, yeah, uh, Okay, sure. Uh, those, uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, GPU-based uh, graph processing systems uh, like uh, Kusha, uh, but they, they most focus on the, pay, the traditional graph applications like PageRank, SSP. Uh, and uh, we, ha we have shown it before. Uh, we, have, we have shown it in the previous slides that uh, in those applications, the uh, the data on the vertices or edges are always uh, scalar values, so they make parallelism over vertices or edges. Then they will achieve uh, uh, some uh, some problems, some problems like thread conflict. Uh, but in GNN, the Data on the vertex or edges are high dimension vector. Uh, so we can make parallelism over the dimension, the feature dimension to achieve, uh, uh, to achieve a better performance for it. Thank you. No problem. Other questions? So there's one uh, aspect of Cable's question that you didn't address, which was uh, you built on top of TensorFlow. Right. What would you change in TensorFlow to make your job easier? And were you limited by TensorFlow in any way? Uh, right. Uh, first, uh, first of all, we do not change the, uh, change the code of TensorFlow. We implement uh, some operators like the kernel optimization, graph kernels, to add these uh, operators to TensorFlow. Uh, but uh, there is a uh, uh, limitation in TensorFlow because when it uh, processes tensors or uh, operators, it needs to load the whole tensor to GPU. As the graph is very sparse, uh, you may load uh, a lot of uh, useless data because uh, the, of the uh, only some vertex are useful in it. So, uh, so to, uh, to resolve this problem, we also design a selective scheduling optimization in our paper. Okay. Let's thank the speaker again.